Joe DeLeo and I, uh, Weatherbell, uh, predicted a very cold winter and said, You're kidding around. We said, watch what happens if this cold winter we're predicting materializes. People will blame global warming. And the reason we predicted a cold winter was we lined up some patterns that we saw in the past that we've seen before and say, okay, look out, here it comes. All right, folks, uh, recognize that guy, both of them? That was me and Joe Bastardi, chief forecaster for Weatherbell Analytics and former chief long-range forecaster at AccuWeather, predicting uh, the winter weather for last winter. Well, today is the last day of summer, and uh, the winter's staring us in the face. Here to talk about that and more is Joe Bastardi. Hey, Joe. Hi, Steve. You know, winter is closer than you think because the true summer ends September 1st in the United States. The warmest three-month period of the year is June, July, and August. And, the, you know, this day the calendar has a little bit of a lag to it. But uh, we're already three weeks into the fall season and less than four months away from the coldest part of the winter. So uh, we're already on our way down, as you can sense. Yeah, I, I can't stand winter here. I just, you know, so, so let me ask you, first of all, uh, is this winter going to be as awful as last year's? Well, it depends on where you are. We believe it will be a, a major cold winter for much of the United States. But I think the worst of it relative to the averages will be centered further south and east. The Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic states into the southeast, the southern plains, uh, that doesn't mean that the winter's not going to be hard in Chicago or Minneapolis. I don't think it'll be as bad as last year there. I think it's more like 2009, 2010, where the core, the worst and the strongest cold uh, relative to averages in the snow, relative to averages, is centered further south and east. It certainly has us nervous as far as uh, some of the things I've heard uh, with the power grid and snow fighting and things like that, that if you do get this kind of uh, brutally cold Arctic air to invade the United States again, uh, there's going to be some real problems with, with uh, economic problems. Now, last year, just before Thanksgiving, I was on uh, Fox TV saying this is going to uh, slap you in the face and pick your pocket. It's going to be an economically nasty winter for the United States. At that time, not many people believed that, uh, believed that. It was just strange at the end of the winter seeing the administration, and I've never been invited over for a beer with the, the president. Yeah, I'm shocked at that, right, Joe. Right. Shocked, very but, shocked. To, yes. to hear them blame the weather, if they'd gotten our forecast from Weather Bell, they would have been ready for it. So, you know, we're here for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let, very selfishly, what about the Northeast? On the Northeast, I think uh, the I-95 corridor, uh, especially Philly and D.C., we expect a uh, m uh, much snowier than normal winter. Uh, for instance, D.C. averages 16 to 20 inches. I wouldn't be surprised to get at least 30 Philadelphia. I don't think I don't think we're going to get as high as last year, but we are going to get quite a bit of snow. And uh, if you remember 2009, 2010, and 2002, 2003, that is the kind of winter. We'll have Gulf of Mexico storms trying to come up. Uh, we are very concerned uh, again because of the overall pattern we're in. That same warm water is centered up there in the northern Pacific that we're going to have a couple of super shots of brutally cold air into the United States yet again. So it looks like a hard winter to us overall. What did you think of the uh, the march in New York yesterday for the people, global the, warming? <laughs> the, people, the climate moochers left their climate mulch behind. Yeah, the one thing I am thankful for is that they, uh, the sponsors of this let us know who we, who, who they were. OK, guys like me, the reason I'm involved in this, if somebody says something that I have knowledge of and it's wrong, I speak up. When someone tells me that we're going through the worst hurricane cycle ever and I could just pull out one thing after another. For instance, yesterday was the anniversary of arguably the most extreme meteorological event from the tropics ever to hit the United States, the 1938 hurricane. The reason? Because it's one thing to have 186 mile an hour winds in the Gulf of Mexico. But when you have it up at Blue Hill, Massachusetts, and you shove 15 feet of water into Providence, that's different. So yesterday was that anniversary. These people have absolutely no idea of what the weather has done or what the weather is capable of doing. Yet they march along like that. And by the way, if you noticed, 99.999% uh, of the uh, world did not take, uh, uh, did not participate in any marches yesterday. But they march along, and it's like they're sheep being led by people who I termed and I'm going to term it again. They're prostituting the weather and climate for something else. And the people driving this at least 
they revealed their agenda yesterday with the signs that we saw and the sponsors who came out. Now what about what about the they love the earth so much and they left garbage all over the place? It's, it's, it, it, it's amazing. Well, you're dealing with people who really are very, uh, you know, they, they need an issue. And I, I think it's a part of a faith system, you know, belief in something that, you know, requires a lot of faith. I think it also is economic. I think there's uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people manipulating people and using them as useful fools. I really believe that's what's going on. Believe me, Steve, I would love to you know to, to drive business. You would love to make the weather more extreme, right, climate right. more extreme. It would drive business to our Joe, site. Joe, but the good news, Joe, we got to go. Is Al Gore had something to do yesterday? He was there. Thank you, Joe. Always great to talk to you, sir. When we My come pleasure. Back, thank you. Thank you. Next roving uh, correspondent for National Review, Kevin Williamson.